Godzilla. Godzilla. A cultural phenomenon, one that's shaken the world literally and figuratively. First imagined by the Toho Company in 1954, Godzilla was first defined as a coping mechanism to help the Japanese deal with the bombings that happened in World War II and Nagasaki and Hiroshima. However, over time, Godzilla has evolved to mean so many more things to so many more people. And I don't just mean evolved in this metaphorical sense, I mean it has evolved, it has changed over the years to become various different formats of itself. And how could it not? It's a simple system, isn't it? Big monster! But somehow, it's a system that Pokemon can't seem to grasp. Sure, they'll tell us that we have Godzilla Pokemon and creatures like Tyranitar or Arctobax, but still, it just feels like, I don't know, it, it, it feels like trying to make an American version of a Japanese property in the year 2000 while trying to just ride the coattails of a Jurassic Park profit margin. But who would do that, right? I mean, that wouldn't happen, that doesn't exist, and yet, I think that the creator of Godzilla was right when he said, it's not Godzilla, it lacks his soul. I think a lot of these Pokemon are the same way. So let's work today on injecting Godzilla's soul, Godzilla's essence, as well as the essence and energy of so many other kaiju into today's drawings. Let's get started. Hello, hi, howdy, hey, it's the Sternator, but my friends call me Stern. Welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna be looking at turning Godzilla, kaiju, and kaiju adjacent characters into Pokemon. And to do so, I wanted to start small. We're gonna start with a character known as Manila. Manila is one of Godzilla's many children. He a little chunky boy. He's the one that you think about when you think about Godzilla's kids, and I love him. I wanted to turn him into a Pokemon so bad. As soon as we started this project and Godzilla Kaiju ended up winning the poll for our Wednesday video, I thought, I got it, yeah, Manila. I can't just go without Manila. And I know that there are a lot of Kaiju that we could hit on, but we're gonna be hitting kind of the, the high points as well as personally some of my favorites. I'm just gonna be honest with you on that. But for Manila and the Godzilla line as a whole, I wanted to capture a couple things. I wanted to capture that rough and harsh texture of Godzilla. I know that it's one of those things that kind of comes and goes with different iterations, but it's important to the character. Godzilla's silhouette is meant to mimic something like the clouds made over Hiroshima and Nagasaki by those atomic bomb drops. It's meant to look like a mushroom cloud brought to life. So having this harder texture, having this thing that makes it a little bit more difficult to handle, is a part of the concept. Now, from Manila, we're not gonna handle that a lot, but using these lines on the stomach and these cut-ins on the cheeks, I think adds in a little bit more depth to the idea that this Pokemon isn't as segmented as others. Like I've said before, I really draw inspiration from generations one and two of Pokemon, as well as a little bit draw from generation three, where we have a lot of these design elements and decals where stuff is segmented and broken up by color. I didn't want to do that here, partially because of the inspiration of this being a property from the 1950s and wanting to have it have a little bit of that older type of vibe to it, but also because I want it to feel harsh. I want it to feel rough. I want it to feel almost unfinished. That's the process. That's not me lampshading and saying, if it looks bad, that's why. That's me saying there was some thought put into this concept. And while I'm sure there's thought put into a lot of the other godzilla -mon that do exist, it'd be nice to be able to see it. It'd be nice to be able to understand. I have the huge uh, opportunity here to be able to walk you through that process and the thoughts that go into these decisions. The Pokemon company doesn't, and those are just kind of left to be found by different YouTube creators and content creators who can then show you and educate you on those designs. But here, I get to walk you through it, especially with Minzilla, the name being a reference to Mini, Zilla, and Manila. It is the tiny lizard Pokemon, a dragon type. I wanted to focus its stats kind of on a first form pseudo legendary, and we'll see that play out a little bit more in upcoming Pokemon. Its shiny replaces that uh, pinkish purplish in the nose with a greenish type of energy for that atomic type of vibe. But moving on, it must get bigger, it must evolve. Our Minzilla must become big boy now. And as he does, he kind of gains this adolescent type of feel. I wanted to go with something that was just more so a cartoonish or chibi type of quality to what we already have with Godzilla. Kind of drawing inspiration from Pokemon like Charmeleon and Croconaw 
and other kind of starters in that way. So there's a lot of inspiration drawn from those. And while I tried to move away in certain aspects, I still wanted to keep this kind of simple. I didn't want to give it so many protrusions and design elements and line work that segmented up the body, like I said before, that make it feel like it's, I don't know, a, a later stage Pokemon or make it feel like it's a later generation Pokemon. I wanted it to feel very akin to those first couple generations. Not just because they're my favorite generations and the best, I'll fight you on it, but because I feel like there's some grounding there. I feel like when you're looking at a concept or a prompt, that part of its identity is it being an older generation of movie, an older generation of book, an older generation of character as a whole, that is part of the prompt. And with Godzilla, I consider that a big part of the prompt, making sure that you capture not just its animal, but now it make fire, but capturing what is the, what is the lore? What is the background? What are the things that you want to hide for people to see? What are the things that you want to hide for people not to see? I'll say this, I design a lot of Pokemon. We do three videos a week, at least. So when I do, there are some little secrets, some little nods that I put in those Pokemon that I'm curious. Are people gonna notice what this is? Are people going to recognize this fun little Easter egg that I hid in this design? With this one, I wanted to make it a little bit more relevant. I wanted it to look almost like a person in a rubber suit. I've, I've heard actually that excuse being used for Backscalibur on like, hey, why is this guy so smooth looking? Why he look like that? And people pointing out and saying, well, it's meant to look like a person in a rubber suit. Now, I don't know if that's the true reason behind some of the design elements, but it definitely makes me not feel very much better about some of those designs. I am, man, I am bagging on Backscalibur a lot this video. It's a, it's a decent design, it's not one of my favorites. And this video I feel kind of a fix for that Godzilla and Kaiju type of uh, design elements that they were going for. I think that it's a good Pokemon. I just wanted to do something without having to focus on fixing something else. So here we have Lazilla. Lazilla is still the tiny lizard Pokemon, still a dragon type. You can see that its stats have increased pretty well. It's a good middle stage pseudo legendary, I love them. And that shiny just gives us a little bit more variation to the color. For the size, I wanted him to be able to kind of fit that toddler type of size. And before we move forward into our final stage, there's something else that I wanna talk about. And that is Discord user Reggie Burt, also known as Reginald the Gremlin. They are a huge supporter and lover of the kaiju character Hedora, which is something that they and I really share and have in common, bond over a little bit. Hedora is kind of an overlooked kaiju character made of this toxic sludge that kind of came to life. So while it's not huge in the canon of Godzilla, we haven't seen it appear too many times, it's still one of my favorite kaiju that I felt I had to draw. If we're gonna do a kaiju inspired video, how am I going to put my own wants on the back burner and say, I'm not gonna draw one of my absolute top favorites. So Reggie Burt, thank you so much for bringing this up in conversation and allowing this to be talked about. I'll say that the Godzilla conversation as a prompt probably wouldn't have happened without Reggie Burt bringing up their love for Hedora and this shared appreciation of this cosmic sludgy nightmare that we have. Design wise, I wanted to stay away from inspiration like muck. I took a couple little things here, but I thought it'd be way too easy to just make a slime monster or a regional variant of Muck and say, you know, all good, all done. So I took some elements from like the body of Wobbuffet, the mouth of Pinsir, the eyes of something. I don't know. But I, I played with a lot of those concepts, a lot of those ideas and kind of threw around different stuff to make something that mimicked that character. I'm not gonna put a picture of Hidoria in the video because it's such a wonderful little guy that I encourage you to go and find pictures to look up this kaiju and say, yeah, he is perfect beyond all recognition. That is the best kaiju. I wouldn't say the best, it's, it's one of my favorites, but it's a creature created out of the toxic sludge that kind of came into contact with various different other chemicals and became a living embodiment of pollution. If you watched our recent uh, Kostawis video from this Monday, you'll know that pollution is a big part of my personal region. So I wanted to include this, not just because it's one of my favorites, 
but because given the last video, it's, it's kind of topical. So take a good long look at this terrible monstrosity who I consider an absolute gem and I would love to have on my team. I call him Hidorax, a play on Hidora, as well as that ax ending that just makes it sound chemical, like a cleaning detergent. It is the pollutant Pokemon, a normal poison type. It's got some pretty good stats, probably a late game Pokemon. And for the shiny, I went with a more tar mud-like feel. Ugh, I, I picture it kind of being like muck in the anime where it just loves to just grab onto you. But moving on, we want to hop right back into our Godzilla design with our final evolution of this Pokemon. And I have to say, this was fun. I went in not really knowing what I wanted to do but understanding some of the rules that I'd set for myself. I knew that this shouldn't feel like a T-Rex, so I solved that problem by making sure that it was standing more upright rather than leaning forward. And I feel like that kind of worked. I wanted to make sure that the legs, them gams baby, was big. Godzilla got them big legs. Godzilla got them thick legs. So I can't forget that. I made sure to include those and wanted to give it that raw power, that energy. I feel like every time that we see Godzilla in a movie, in a comic, in any sort of media, it's always amped up bigger. It's always stronger. And it's one of those areas that the creators are allowed to do that because it fits the character. That idea of evolution in Godzilla, making it so that it's constant. God, I'll say this, Godzilla, fight me in the comments, Godzilla, was the first Super Saiyan-esque character. The idea of the more that you beat it down, the stronger that it's gonna get. And the ability for new creators to come in and add on to that canon makes Godzilla such an amazing character. Makes Godzilla something that can exist for so many generations because the idea of changing it as a concept is a part of its concept. So I went with that, made it darker. Throughout the three variations that we have on its forms, it's gotten darker to the point that we can see that blackish Godzilla. I put those kind of cut in rib lines throughout the whole body, again, to emphasize that roughness to its texture. And let me know down in the comments what you think the abilities for this Pokemon, as well as the rest would be. I am so curious as to what you think about that because you guys are a lot better at that than I am, and Godzilla was rough. Like I said, every iteration changes its lore, changes what it does. Is it a fire type because it breeds atomic fire? Or is it a poison type because the fire is atomic? Or maybe it's a water type because it dwells in the water? Or possibly a ground type because of its earth-shaking movements? It has so many, so let me know down in the comments what you think it's typing and ability should be. I went for a standard dragon typing because I figure Maybe it has an ability that allows it to change those things. I think that'd be really cool. But for some further insight on that idea, we're gonna look at Kaizilor. Kaizilor takes on the names Kaiju, Zilla, and Lore, meaning a shorthand of Lord. So it is Kaiju, Lizard, God. Perfect, just kind of works. And Kaizilor just kind of almost rolls off the tongue. No longer the tiny lizard Pokemon. This is now the god lizard Pokemon, a pure dragon type, but I'm hopeful that you guys' abilities for these Pokemon will help amp it up in its coolness factor. It's shiny takes in that atomic breath type of green vibe that you would try and see and find in that atomic energy type of Pokemon. Pretty big in size, but we're gonna get bigger. And of course, we can't introduce Godzilla as a Pokemon without making it a member of the 600 Club. So there he is. And if, if we're going to have Godzilla as a Pokemon, we're going to need something that can challenge it. If it's gonna be the pseudo legendary, then it has to have some sort of connection to some other Pokemon. And what better Pokemon than a Ghidorah inspired one? Lord Ghidorah is a amazing character in the franchise. Godzilla's greatest enemy, this cosmic space lizard dragon, wyvern type of thing comprised of three different creatures fused together by some ancient cosmic entity. Ghidorah is so many things and it became a challenge, I'll be honest. Not just because of building in the lore, building in the concepts, but also with the idea of this is a three-headed dragon 
In our last video uh, from Tuesday, I talked about how <laughs> three-headed dragons are hard. They're difficult. I drew Hydreigon and went out of my way to make some changes to its design for our Paradox video that made it a little bit easier for me to draw. And then here I am a day later having to draw a three-headed dragon anyway. I wanted to go with something regal that made it look dangerous, so it has these spikes all over its body. It has this kind of demeanor that makes it feel like it is challenging others. This is not the king that sits on the throne and waits for a challenger to approach them. This is King Ghidorah, buddy. This is King Ghidorah, friend. King Ghidorah seeks out challenges from across the cosmos. I do see this Pokemon being a cosmic and space-faring entity, one that goes looking for the strongest and most powerful creatures to battle. In the Godzilla lore, it's even mentioned that Ghidorah may have been what initially came and took out the dinosaurs. If that's gonna be the case, that this Pokemon may have been what made our fossil Pokemon fossil Pokemon, it's gotta be big. It's gotta be strong. And I'm hoping that I captured that because, because I think Ghidorah is cool. I think he was done dirty in the King Kong Godzilla recent movies that have come out in a couple past years, but I think that he still holds up. Like I said, there's nothing cooler than a dragon, unless it's a cosmic dragon that is a fusion of three different aliens and breeds freaking lightning and is part of this god titan pantheon. Like It, it just gets cooler every single time that you learn more about God Ghidorah. So I want to try and capture that. I don't know if I did it well enough. I don't know if I did it right. Again, you guys have to let me know down in the comments what you think with these. And while you're down there, check out the description where you can join our Discord. We're about to hit 1,000 members. So maybe member 1,000 will be you. I'm excited to see. We'll have some giveaways and stuff going on with that. I'll talk about a little bit later. But for the moment, let's talk about Gideti. Gideti is a play on Ghidorah and Deity. Gideti is a space terror Pokemon, a dragon electric type with a big bump in power. But how is our Godzilla Mon gonna be able to fight something that powerful? Well, that's where it becomes kind of the David and Goliath story, isn't it? Kind of the whole point of Pokemon. For the shiny, I went with that mecha silver type of color. Again, referencing the recent Godzilla and King Kong movies. Not gonna get too much into detail on that in case there's anyone on the planet who wants to see those. But we're not done yet. We absolutely are not done yet because I have one more character to draw. And while they are not technically a kaiju, they do exist within the kaiju canon in so many ways. This year, Netflix released Ultraman as a new movie, and I have been obsessed ever since. It's one of the few times that I actually went out after watching and played a claw machine to win an Ultraman figurine, and I did it. I won. I'm a, I'm a winner. Um, this is what a winner looks like. And I love it. I, Ultraman is such a cool character, such a fun concept. The idea of this human who's able to transform into this giant to fight Kaiju. Now I thought, how do you translate that into a Pokemon? Because that's a lot going on. Well, we kind of already have a lot of that stuff, don't we? Gigantamax allows Pokemon to become bigger versions of themselves. And we already have a Pokemon that actually actually already kind of looks like Ultraman. I mean, Ultraman is known for having this gem in the center of his chest, almost like how Gallade has that protrusion. Also having this fin on the top of his head, much like Gallade does. And also kind of being a fighter who uses this psychic cosmic energy, almost like they're a fighting psychic type. It just kind of fit together really well. So, I looked at that, looked at Gallade, thought, well, Gallade doesn't have a Dynamax, or it doesn't have a Gigantamax form, I should say. So I played with that around a little bit, and dude, this is a fun design. I love it. It is like this cosmic warrior, this space-faring entity. It's, it, it, it so fits the vibe of Ultraman. Imagine it, you're out there with your Gallade and you're coming across a Gigantamax Pokemon, a Kaiju, if you will. What are you gonna do? Well, you can use Gallade and activate your Gigantamax energy to make him grow, just like Ultraman does, into this Ultraman-esque character and fight a Kaiju. Wow, wow, Pokemon Company. Pokemon Company. 
Why are we not here? Why are we not doing this? We already have Kaiju in Pokemon with giant Gigantamax and Dynamax Pokemon. We already have a character who looks like Ultraman. Why did we not make an ult- Whatever, that's why I'm here. I'm making an Ultraman based Pokemon and there's nothing you can do to stop me. I love this design. I don't know if I've said that enough, but I love this design. Hidora may be my favorite Kaiju. This is my favorite Kaiju adjacent character. And that is including Power Rangers. So take a look at our G-Max Gallade, the Blade Pokemon psychic fighting type. I love him. Let me know in the comments what you think about this guy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Do all that fun stuff while you're down there. I went with the shiny using kind of the shiny Gallade colors. And for the size comparison, I'm gonna be honest, that's probably not to scale with how big G-Max forms are, but it, it gives you a perspective that this is a big guy. He big man, he, 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 he not just big man, he ultra man. So as we look at these designs that we've worked on today, I'm curious, who's your favorite? Who would you add to your team in this Toho inspired universe? Let me know down in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys and uh, Discord, Patreon. Oh, we do the Patreon poll every week that goes out on Monday. So next week, it'll probably be something different. I don't know, but it sounds like you know where to find me and I'll catch you in the next one. Before I end up saying bye and doing all that fun stuff, I wanna be able to shout out some of the people who've helped support this channel and make it what it is, allowed us to grow, allowed us to thrive, uh, including and especially Teacup Cryptid, who is our master level trainer over on the Patreon. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Teacup Cryptid. Thank you guys for your support, just being there, being a part of the community. And if you wanna be a greater part of the community, join the Discord down below. I'll see you there. And uh, yeah.